can't breathe. My heart is pounding. My throat is closing in on me, and I'm so dizzy. Why is my voice changing? Why am I saying these things? Why am I thinking these things? This is what a panic attack feels like to me. That is what a panic attack felt like when I was in a public auditorium in front of 80 people and I was giving a speech. And I had to make it through it. There's no, I'm just going to walk away because nobody else could give the speech. It was about training. It was my job. I made it through that speech. But I said that day that I'm never again going to talk in public. I said I'm never going to put myself in a position where people are going to look at me and I'm going to ever have to feel like that again. And I didn't. I didn't for about a year. I refused. They would say, will you talk? And I said, nope, nope, I'm not talking. But I realized it was unrealistic for me to say that I would never speak in public again. And I knew I'd have to find a way to deal with my anxi anxiety about speaking in public because it affects my ability to be able to share how I feel or how my thoughts are on things. And it also affects whether or not I'm going to get promoted or passed over for a promotion. Because if I can't do my job, then they're going to find someone who can. So I decided at that point to join a local Toastmasters International Club. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Toastmasters International today because the name I think is a little bit misleading and people don't really understand what it is. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about how it originated and the purpose of the club today. We'll go over that. And what a meeting looks like because they're weekly meetings and I go every week. And hopefully this is something that I can share with you, if not to inform you, but even if you wanted to decide to check a club out someday for yourself. So the first thing, it or, it, the origin of Toastmasters started with Ralph C. Smedley, who was a guy from the YMCA in California, Santa Ana, California. And it was in 1924 he decided to start this club for, for young men who he felt lacked social skills uh, in settings where they would need to give toasts, propose toasts after dinner, or if they needed to lead meetings. He felt that they were ill-equipped to be able to do that. So he started that club, and it turned into a national, it's now a national and international organization. I find it kind of interesting, though, that women were not allowed to join the club until August of 1973. I thought that was pretty neat. The purpose of Toastmasters now, first and foremost, is to become a better public speaker. And what they do is there's a communication manual that you get when you sign up. And this has a list of 10 different types of speeches that you, that you can complete. Now, if you look at on your handout, they have a list of them under the communication speaking objectives. Those are the 10 different types of speeches that you get that help you prepare to learn how to do gesturing and just even an icebreaker just to start off but different things that you can work on in public speaking. The second purpose of Toastmasters is to become a better leader. And that is done with the second manual, which is a competent leadership manual. Once you finish the 10 speeches in here, you get a competent communicator designation. And once you finish your leadership manual, then you also get a competent leadership designation. And that's Leadership is done by the meeting roles, and that's in your handout, the meeting roles overview. So these are different roles that you perform at each of the meetings. The third purpose of Toastmasters also that I found was it helps you to gain confidence when you're speaking on the fly. Because a lot of times you don't have time to sit down and prepare a speech. Someone calls on you in a meeting and they're asking, hey, can you, you just got some information on that. Can you go ahead and share that? And you have to be able to respond in an eloquent manner that doesn't sound like you don't know what you're talking about. So that's also something that helps me to be able to get up and, and be able to talk on anything. That's called the table topics. That's one of the roles. And every time you win, you get an award. So they give you a little card, and you get a trophy that you get to take home. And basically, the table topics master has a topic, and you don't know what it's going to be, and then they call on you and you go up there and they'll ask you a question and you need to answer it. And it can be funny and silly, but it can also be serious and you just never know. And it's all in good fun. Everybody has a good time at the meeting. 
The third thing I wanted to cover is what a Toastmasters meeting actually looks like. They have an agenda every week. This is a sample agenda. And the roles are filled out. Everybody tries to participate and partake in a role. And the different roles, like you can see on your handout, there's a Toastmaster for the day. And then there's a Table Topics Master who comes up with the things where you get up there and speak on the fly. And there's an ah er counter who counts when you get up and you say your ums and your ahs and your ers, or anything that kind of stumbles you down, like I have a few. And the grammarian, which is the word of the day. So you pick a word of the day and everybody needs to try to use that when they speak. Now this is not meant to be a critical situation, but it's meant to be helpful. Mrs. A.Y. actually tells me if I say wanna and gonna, and I didn't even know that I say it all the time, and I might have already said it a few times right now. <laughs> or if you say um, so many people say um, and ah, and like, and you never realize that you're saying those things, but those dilute the message that you're trying to get across when you use them. And that's all it is. It's just a spirit of helpfulness in the meeting. They also have contests, which are, they have the table topics contest, they have a humorous speech contest in the fall. In the spring, they have an interna international contest, and the winner goes to this year's Kuala Lumpur. They'll pick a world champion out of everybody, and they all compete to get to that level. And they also have evaluation contests. And of course, what would a meeting be without speeches? So there's a side, there's <coughs> actual on the agenda time set aside for two separate speeches, and you sign up so that you can get your competent communicator designation. You sign up to do the different speeches, and you get, you don't, you're not pressured. You can take as much time as you need to to get them done. But it's a safe place to speak and practice. When we first started here, our very first speech, and nobody knew anyone, and it was so uncomfortable because it's like, I've never seen these people before. And as we progress, doesn't it feel better? Like, I know you, and I know you a little more, and I know you a little more, and it's becoming like I'm speaking in front of friends. And that's what this is. It's a safe place to talk and be able to get comfortable because the more you do it, the better you're going to be at getting in front of people that you don't know to do it. So here I have explained to you how Toastmasters originated, the purpose of it today, and what a meeting looks like. And I hope I've given you a glimpse of what this organization is about. And I know that some people are saying, this is the class, I'm never going to speak again, I have to get this so I can get my degree, you know, this is a requirement. It's a requirement for my degree too. I get that. I understand that we're all have to be here in one way, shape, or form. But in this book, and this is by Jeremy Donovan, who wrote the bestseller, How to Deliver a TED Talk, if you guys have ever heard the TED Talk, and Ryan Avery, who was a 2012 world champion of public speaking. They wrote Speaker Leader Champion, and in it, they, in the very beginning, they talk about any one of a number of surveys conclusively finds that public speaking is intrinsically linked to business success. Among the pr most prominent is the one conducted annually by the National Association of Colleges and Employers. In its Job Outlook 2013 survey of 244 employers, the ability to verbally communicate with persons inside and outside the organization was the number one skill rated at 4.63 on a five point scale. It's desired by employers in evaluating job candidates. So you see, this is, this is something that you need. This is something that you need more than here. It could be something that you're going to need for the rest of your life because you're always going to have to be put in a position where you need to talk about how you feel on, on subjects coherently and be able to get your point across. So I hope you never have to go through what I did when I experienced a panic attack in front of my coworkers. And I hope that this information that I shared with you today share some information and shed some light on what Toastmasters really is. And last, um, in the words of Ryan Avery, the 2012 world champion of public speaking, your message matters. What will you do with it? Thank you.